In this video, we'll cover the initial testing of the solar air heater. We'll analyze our results, discuss modifications needed, provide a quick overview of reassembly, conduct further testings and complete our BTU calculations, install the unit, complete electrical connections, and share with you some final thoughts. Having completed and then tested our first solar air heater, we quickly found that we had done many things right and one or two things wrong. The unit produced heat, lots of heat, but not enough flow. Back in part two of this series, we discussed the design of the opening that we ended up choosing based on research conducted by others. Mr. Energy Free explored nine different designs affecting airflow in the interior of the heat chamber of the solar air heater. His goal was to determine the best design to produce the most heat. During his studies, he determined that three different designs tied for top place. We chose the four hole design for our heater. All right, well, the sun right now is sort of in a hazy, just a little bit behind a cloud or something like that. And we're getting 160 Fahrenheit coming out of this. 161, 62, 61. And a uh, pr pretty sunny day, but it is definitely behind cloud a little bit right now. Oops, sorry, I'm not very good with the camera there. So you can see there, 160 whatever. And the temperature going in with the fan, I can share already that I'm going to need a lot more fan. I want to bring the temperatures down, but increase the volume. What we overlooked, which was a huge oversight on our part, was that all of his working models were smaller units than what we had built. His designs were shorter, i.e. less pop cans in a row. His cans means less air restriction. His tests had just four cans in a row. Our design uses 17 pop cans in a row, resulting in over four times the amount of airflow restriction. What you'll see from our testing is we have no shortage of heat, but it didn't matter how powerful of a fan we used. I couldn't generate the cubic feet per minute of airflow necessary to make a worthwhile heating appliance. Back to the drawing boards. Again, building on the progress of others, I noticed Jim Meany from Cansol Air in Newfoundland has been working with his solar heating panels as far back as 1977. As a matter of fact, his model RA240 SolarMax was tested with the assistance of the National Research Council of Canada. His units, which are similar in size to my own, use a hollowed out pop can design. Although initially my game plan was to utilize a bimetal snap switch, and you can see me testing it here, using a blow dryer to heat up a switch, which closes the circuit, allowing power to reach the lamp. I did actually install this unit, but later realized that it didn't maximize the use of the solar air heater. This switch, set to close at 35 Celsius, only provides current to the fan if the interior chamber reached 35 Celsius. In reality, you want the fan to be running anytime the interior of the solar air heater is warmer than the building. This calls for a temperature differential switch or a thermostatic switch that can be controlled. So although a bimetal snap switch is a good solution, you'll see in a little bit what I ended up using.
Two separate drill bits were used, one for the threads for the aluminum and one to clear the shank and the threads for the plexiglass. For plexiglass, first run the drill backwards, never exceeding the weight of the drill as far as pressure goes. Then finish it by running forward. In part one, I shared that using calculations provided online, at 12 noon on a sunny winter day at 45 degrees north, my design should produce 4,600 to 5,000 BTUs, somewhere between 1,350 and 1,460 watts. That statement was theoretical and calculated using ideal circumstances. This panel isn't perfect, likely loses some heat, isn't pointed exactly at the sun. Let's see what it really does. Let's call it 20 Fahrenheit. I'll call it 70. So it's raising at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The fan I chose moves 141 cubic feet per minute. The temperature rise or delta between incoming and outgoing air stabilized at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It did this while moving 141 cubic feet per minute. The formula is cubic feet per minute times 1.08 times the temperature rise equals BTUs per hour. Yes, it'll pilot hold. It actually doesn't look that bad from there. No, it looks good. But it's, uh, it will when we're done. Yep. Can't quite get in here. From outside maybe? Yeah, I might have to finish the front side. <laughs> Excellent fit. Yeah, that's good. Oh, and the fan is even working. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should do a dry fit before we get too excited. A dry fit? Yeah, literally. Oh, I know. Good morning. Oh, the wind's going to catch you, my friend. I think so, yeah. You want me to stop this and help you? No, no, let's do that. It looks good. That's going. Oh, yeah, it just needed to go past that metal. Uh, Ooh, is it ever uh, not nice out? Oh, no, it's not.
As I shared earlier, wanting to bring any air heated by the sun into the building, if it was warmer than what was in the building, I ended up buying a Digitin wireless thermostat outlet. This temperature controlled outlet can be used for both heating and cooling and it comes with a remote control and a six foot temperature probe. Plug the thermostat into an outlet. Plug a power bar into the thermostat so you can turn on fans in multiple solar air heaters using a single thermostat. Plug the fan or fans into the power bar and plug in an AC-DC Hobbs meter if you're interested in tracking your energy savings. Ooh, is that ever warm? Ooh. Very, very warm. As soon as I get the, uh, I expect as soon as I get the, um, uh, the fan going, it should cool down. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it. It's 54 Celsius coming out of there right now. All right, so this should be very interesting. I was at 54. Um, I have now plugged in the fan, and so it's now blowing air through the whole system, bringing in 141 cubic feet per minute, and it's starting to cool down. So the air coming in right now is 53 Celsius. It's 124 Fahrenheit coming in right now. All right, we're several minutes later. Uh, it's coming in around 38 degrees Celsius. Uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit coming in right now. I'd like to remind everybody that it's minus 10 outside right now. Well, it's 60 minutes later. Uh, it's been running continuously at 141 cubic feet of air per minute. And we're holding uh, 33 degrees Celsius. So 91 Fahrenheit coming in. Here are my final thoughts. This was tremendously rewarding as a project. I learned a lot between the time I started this project and the time that I finished it. The solar air heater I ended up with is different than my original plans. As I learned, I altered the design. The size of the heater changed to maximize the use of available materials. I dropped the idea of using a solar powered panel to power the fan. If I was off grid, I would have gone that route, but with AC available, the small amount of power consumption of this fan would have never justified the cost of a solar panel. I learned about the different properties of high heat paint and what brands work with styrofoam insulation. I learned about the balance between airflow restriction and temperature delta. 
I ended up changing the design of the heat chamber to reduce restrictions and increase cubic feet per minute. My first unit completed in 2017 produced too much heat and not enough airflow. Was it worth it? I guess it depends on how you measure success. It was rewarding to see this work and it definitely produces heat. On more than one occasion, I've caught myself asking, why are more people not doing this? Using a single unit like this to heat a 40 foot by 44 foot hanger would be like trying to heat a gymnasium with a candle. A single unit like mine would be ideal for heating a nine foot by 12 foot insulated workshop. For a building my size, multiple units are needed and a greater focus on sealing gaps in insulation. Was it worth it? Absolutely yes. Over the months I've been asked many questions. Can a solar air heater replace a conventional furnace? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say no. Not to point out the obvious, but solar air heaters only produce heat during the daytime and even then only when the sun is not impeded by clouds. Solar air heaters will supplement your heat source and reduce consumption, whether it's gas, propane, or electricity. What did it cost to build? I really don't know. Probably more than I think. This is, of course, a decision. I know many have made their heaters out of wood or even cardboard. Wood might be a good choice. I ended up using aluminum in my case because I'm comfortable with aluminum and it doesn't deteriorate over time. It's a really good outdoor material. Rather than me giving you a final number, which I don't know, I can remind you of the materials I used. First off, a lot of PL construction adhesive, rivets, intake and exhaust plenum, ductwork, paint, 5052 aluminum. It's about a third the cost of 6061. If memory serves, I think I paid $42 for a 12 foot sheet of 32 thou. I did use 6061 extruded aluminum for the cross braces, plexiglass, 100% silicon, screws and washers, plywood for the intake and exhaust manifolds, mounting brackets, AC fan, thermostatic controlled switch, Hobbs meter, spray foam insulation as well as styrofoam insulation, and miscellaneous tools and other parts, uh, especially with working with the, um, the empty pop cans in order to work with them and not distort them. What does it cost to run? The short answer would be almost nothing. Just one of my units, which is capable of over 7,000 BTU as I've demonstrated earlier, uses a 16 watt fan to circulate the warm air. In January, at 45 degrees north, there's just eight hours of sunlight per day. On a sunny day, the unit might be running for five hours. So using the formula of watts times hours divided by a thousand times your kilowatt rate, if I had 30 days of sunlight in a row and the unit was running for five hours a day, it would cost me 20 cents a month in power. 20 cents, that's it. How does that compare to an electric heater? As we demonstrated earlier, this solar air heater will produce over 7,600 BTU. Let's use a more conservative number of just 5,000 BTU and then convert that to watts. 5,000 BTU equals 1,465 watts. Using the same formula we used earlier, a solar air heater is more than 100 times cheaper to run than an electric heater. So what are my thoughts? Well, it's minus nine Celsius outside and this has been running all day. The sun is no longer here. It's off in this direction. And it is 35 Celsius coming out of the chamber. I don't know if you can see that or not. Ninety five Fahrenheit. Pretty cool.